God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Road Street, directly behind the Walmart Lowe's on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520 heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Thursday night service, along with my members, Brother Roland and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena and her beautiful husband, Stan, my brother, Minister Harvey Cole, and his beautiful wife, Kimberly, my brother, Harry Evans, amen. And we want to continue to remember his wife, Sister Beverly Conyers Evans, who went on to be with the Lord on March the 4th of last year. She was a pillar of this ministry. We love her. We miss her in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining my sister church, Spirit of Liberty's Ministries, Pastor by the phenomenal minister, Kenya King, and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King, amen. They have services every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. God bless you, Pastor King. I love you, my friend. Thank you for the beautiful birthday wishes you gave me on Tuesday night, amen. I want to thank everybody for, amen, the beautiful birthday shout-outs, amen, as I turn a young 58 years old. God bless you, Sister King. Turned a young 58 years old. I feel good in my body. No pain. Perfect in my mind. Hallelujah. Went to the VA appointment this week. The doctor said, you are the healthiest 58-year-old man I've seen in a while. Hallelujah. Zero, zero defects in no area of my life. Oh, that's the word of God. That's what you call living in bounds, allowing the word of God to bless you and keep you healthy throughout your body as well as peaceful in your mind. In the name of Jesus. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube. There were over, amen. God bless you, Sister Glory. I love you. There were over 365 messages on my YouTube channel. You ought to join them and be blessed, amen, free of charge. Amen. Getting you ready for our soon and coming king. Oh, yeah, I said it. I said it again. Getting you ready for our soon and coming king in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today's message, part two, part two of understanding spiritual warfare. Part two of understanding spiritual warfare. Our foundation of verse again is Ephesians 6 and 12. It reads on this wise, it is, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to come before your presence and hear what you have to say and not what Pastor Red has to say. It might be my voice that they recognize. It might be my face that they know. But let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Thank you for the audience tonight. Thank you for everybody that's here with me. Thank you for everybody that's going to join Thank you for everybody that's going to listen to this message on Facebook. Thank you for everybody that's going to join my YouTube channel and listen to it through the YouTube channel. Oh, Lord, because it is a word of life to those that thirst and hunger after righteousness. God, I thank you for the anointing to teach these types of messages because I am no better than the individual that's listening to me right now. In the name of Jesus. God, we love you. Thank you for the impartation of spiritual knowledge before you even begin to talk to us tonight. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. It's all about the gospel. Everything about spiritual warfare is obtained through the gospel. The weaponry 
for spiritual warfare is obtained in the gospel. The peace, the happiness, the healing, the finances all obtained through the preaching of the gospel. The preaching of the gospel in relationship to spiritual warfare is so powerful that Jesus told his disciples before he descended into heaven for the last time in his earthly form he told them to go into all the world in Mark chapter 16 verse 15 he says go into all the world and preach the gospel that's what he said Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Why did he tell them to go into all the world and preach the gospel? Because of 1 John 5 and 19. 1 John 5 and 19 says that the whole world lieth in the power of the evil one. Notice it says it does not lie in the evil one. It lies in the power of the evil one. And when you're facing a power... You're facing a spiritual power. And so you need a spirit in order to face a spiritual power. And this spiritual power causes us to engage in spiritual warfare. And when we engage in this spiritual warfare, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. In the name of Jesus. Let us go into our slides. Hallelujah. Preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel is a spiritual warfare used to drive out the power of Satan. See that? That's what is it's used to drive out the power of Satan because the whole world lieth in the power of the evil one. The preaching of the gospel. That's what Jesus has told, told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So the preaching of the gospel is a spiritual warfare used to drive out the power of Satan and usher in the kingdom of God for believers to dwell in. It is called the place of ascension. The place of ascension can only be accessed through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whatever high place of ascension you looking to get into as a born again believer, the only way to get there is through the preaching of the gospel. David says in Psalms 23 and 6, the psalmist says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What is the house of the Lord? It is the place of ascension. And that's what we're going to be addressing tonight. Whether or not you spend your time in the place of ascension, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, or you spend it in the law and carnality that tries to subdue the gospel of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In order for any believer... To engage in spiritual warfare, the believer must be seated in the place of ascension. And nothing in the law of Moses can put you there. Nothing in the law of Moses can put you there. The law makes you cover up. That's what the law does. The, the, the law does not put you nowhere. The law only covers only covers up your sins. Once you arrive to the place of ascension, the sins have been dealt with 
by the cross. Colossians 3 and 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So if you want to know what Christ is sitting at, this verse tells us what Christ is sitting at. It tells us that Christ is sitting on the right hand of God. So if 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 going to tell us, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, but old things are become new. So if you're in Christ, and Christ is sitting on the right hand of God in ascension, then that means that you have ascended to a higher place. The definition of the word ascension is rising to an important position or a higher level. The gospel of Jesus Christ is higher than the law of Moses. And because of that, to try and defeat the power of Satan outside of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're not going to do it. And you're going to live a defeated life as a born again believer. So in order for any believer to engage in spiritual warfare, the believer must be seated in the place of ascension and nothing in the law of Moses can put you there. In fact, here it is, ready, watch this, Sister Gloria, Pastor King, Sister King. In fact, in order for Moses to receive the law, Moses had to be put in a place of ascension. Exodus 24 and 12 says, then the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay there. He didn't, he, he just didn't tell him, to, he didn't tell him just come up to the mountain. Oh, Pastor King, he said, come up to me on the mountain and stay there. I need you to stay in the place of ascension because I want to, because I want to give you something to give to, to give to, to, to give to the people so that they can have instructions on what I want them to do. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay there and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandments I have written for their instructions. Moses got the tablets of stone and the law at the place of ascension. We get the Holy Ghost from the place of ascension. God bless you, Sister Selena, I love you. We're talking about the place of ascension tonight. It was a fact that Moses, in order for him to receive the law and the Ten Commandments, had to be called to a place of ascension. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the believer's place of ascension, not the law of Moses. Everything you want to know about living victoriously is in this statement. You want to live a victorious life? Then you better live. You better make sure every last bit of your dwelling is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is the believer's place of ascension, not the law of Moses. Saul did not believe that. It wasn't until he was slapped down on the road to Damascus was God able to call him up to the place of ascension. Before the road to Damascus, Saul was doing everything according to the law to subdue the gospel of Jesus Christ. He had got letters from the high priest to go out and persecute everybody 
that was sitting in the place of ascension. Everything you want to know about living victoriously is in this statement about the gospel of Jesus Christ is the believer's place of ascension. Hallelujah. Colossians, Ephesians 2 and 6. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. God raised us to a place of ascension with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. Where are you at as a believer? Where are you at as a believer? Are you in the place of ascension or are you in the law of Moses? Because you know exactly where you are. You know exactly where you live and you know exactly where you dwell in the name of Jesus. The Hebrew boys knew where they was. They knew where they was. They knew they was in the place of ascension. And as long as they was in the place of ascension, the fiery furnace could do nothing to them. Why not? Because the fiery furnace was in the power of the evil one. But the three Hebrew boys obeyed the Lord's commandment not to bow down before anything in the name of Jesus. The three Hebrew boys knew where they was. Do you know where you are? Jonah knew exactly where he was when he was in the fish's belly. You know why he knew? Because he left the place of ascension. The place of ascension told him to go to Nineveh. He got on a ship to Tarshish. He left the place of ascension and he went and got on the ship and he knew exactly where he was when he did it. Do you know where you are? Paul and Silas knew where they was when they was in prison. They knew they was in the place of ascension and because they knew they was in the place of ascension rather than complaining, rather than arguing, rather than murmuring, they sang songs, they sang songs and hymns and then the earthquake came because the power of the evil one can do nothing to you as long as you sit in the place of ascension and that is why the bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper well the reason why no weapon formed against you shall prosper is because you are in the place of ascension and in the place of ascension jesus says i beheld satan as lightning being cast out of heaven he was cast out of where the place of ascension is at you know exactly where you are peter knew exactly where he was when he followed Jesus into this inner court, he knew exactly where he was at. And he, and, he, and he was not in the place of ascension. He was not in the place of ascension. He was in a place where he denied the Lord three times to the point that he began to curse. You know exactly where you are. You know exactly where you are. Are you in the place of ascension or are you in the law or carnality because you know exactly where you are? How do you know? Here we go. We've been to start teaching. How do you know where you are? Victorious living. Victory in the trials of life. You get the victory in the trials of your life. That can only be achieved from the place of ascension. That can only be achieved from the place of ascension. Ask the man of God from Judah. He knows. All you got to do is ask the man of God from Judah. Because when you lose the place of ascension, you die. 
When Adam and Eve lost the place of ascension, they died and was kicked out of the Garden of Eden. When Lot's wife lost the place of ascension, when she looked back, when she was told not to, she died in the name of Jesus. You know exactly where you are. Let's read this, these Bible verses about the man of God from Judah. 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 8 through 11, and verse 14 through 22. The man of God from Judah went to Bethel to cry out against the altar. The, the, the crazy thing about this is, if you was to read Genesis chapter 35, then you know that Jacob went to Luz. Luz, L-U-Z, was, was Bethel. Luz is another name for Bethel. And Jacob built an altar there. So King Jeroboam, the first king of the northern kingdom of Israel, when God divided Israel, ten, king, ten tribes here, two tribes there, King Jeroboam was over there. And so the man of God from Judah, which is not from the northern kingdom of Israel, he was from the southern kingdom where, where Judah and Benjamin were at. So the man of God from Judah went up to the northern kingdom to cry out against the altar in Bethel. While he was there, the king heard him crying out against the altar and he put his hand upon the prophet. And when he put his hand upon the prophet, who was in the place of ascension at the time, his hand dried up. And when his hand dried up, he begged the man of God from Judah to beseech the Lord to heal his hand. And so the man of God from Judah, sitting in his place of ascension, besought the Lord, and the Lord restored King Jeroboam's hand back to the healthy hand that it was before he put his hand on the man of God from Judah. And so when he did that, the king said, come back with me to Bethel and eat. Hallelujah. But the man of God from Judah, picking it up in verse 8, the man of God from Judah answered the king and he said, even if you were to give me half of your possessions, I will not go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water here, because this is not the place of ascension. For I was commanded by the word of the Lord, not by the law, not by the law, but because this, because when you're in the place of ascension, you, the word of God is going to command you. The word of God is going to command you when you're in the place of ascension. And if you're saying that you're hearing from the word of God, then that means you're in the place of ascension. And I want to know why we're not obeying what the word of God is telling us when we're saying we're in the place of ascension, but we're living like we ain't because we're not living a victorious life when it comes to the trials that we face in our life. It was commanded me by the word of the Lord. God bless you, Valerie Robinson. I love you. The man of God from Judah says, I was commanded by the word of the Lord because I'm in the place of ascension right now. The only reason why I'm in Bethel is because I'm in my place of ascension. God told me to come out of the place of ascension, go into the world, keep my mind in the place of ascension, keep my heart in the place of ascension, keep my beliefs in the place of ascension, but go down into the valley of the shadow of death and cry out against the altar in Bethel in the name of Jesus. It was commanded by the word of God, was commanded by the word of the Lord. You must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way you came. Don't do it. So he took another road and did not return by the way he had come 
to Bethel. Now there was a certain old prophet living in Bethel. What's that telling us? That's telling us that this old prophet was not living in the place of ascension because if he would have been living in the place of ascension then God wouldn't have needed to send the man of God from Judah there. And so we got these old prophets today still preaching the law in carnality to people living in ascension pulling them down out of the place of ascension all because they say they're prophets. I don't care if you're a pastor. I don't care if you're an evangelist pastor, teacher, apostle, prophet, I don't care what you are. If I'm hearing from the word of God, I'm not thinking about you. There was an old prophet living in Bethel whose sons came and told him all that the man of God of Judah had done there that day. They also told their father what he had said to the king. That means, Pastor King, that means that they told their daddy that the man of God from Judah told the king that it was commanded him by the word of the Lord that he must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way you came. That means they told him that because that's what this verse says. It says they also told their father that he had, what he had said to the king. The old prophet well, after the man of God, he found him sitting under an oak tree and asked, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? I am, he replied. So the old prophet said to him, Come home with me and eat. Oh! See, that's what I'm trying to say. See, 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 that's, what, that's, that's why y'all don't live victorious today. Because y'all think because that person says prophet so-and-so, bishop so-and-so, evangelist so-and-so, doctor so-and-so, potentate so-and-so. The Bible says, know them to labor among you. If I don't know you and you got a title in front of your name, I'm not impressed and I'm not going to fellowship with you. I'm going to fellowship with the living God in the place of a sense where he put me at. And I don't care what you say about me. I got to protect my place of ascension against you got to protect your place of ascension against church people that ain't living in the place of ascension because they don't live by the gospel of Jesus Christ even though they say they born again believers but they're not producing the fruit that the gospel of Jesus Christ says that they should be producing in their life the old prophet said to him, come home with me and eat. God bless the sister Esther Spivey, I love you. Oh, sister Esther Spivey, that old prophet said to the man of God from Judah, come home with me to eat. The man of God said, look what he said. See, this was, this, God bless the tone, I love you, thank you for joining. This is what kills me right here. Y'all know what y'all heard in the place of a sentence and y'all still get defeated. The man of God said, I cannot turn back and go with you, nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. See, you don't, don't, don't ask me to come and preach at your church. I ain't coming. Don't ask me to do no revivals with you. Not coming. Unless the Lord tells me to do it. I think we, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a man of God, a woman of God, and you spend the time with God, stop, stop trying to be seen until it's time for God to make it to where you can be seen in the name of Jesus. The man of God said, I cannot turn back and go with you, nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. I have been told by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread. Now he's telling them something that his sons had already told him. Because it says his sons told their father what he had said to the king. So he's going to tell So he's going to repeat himself. He's going to repeat himself. I cannot turn back and go with you. 
nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. I've been told by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water there or return by the way you came. The old prophet answered, I too am a prophet. I don't care who you are. If I'm telling you what the word of the Lord told me, there is nothing you can say to Pastor Red that can get me to do nothing with you. Nothing. And I hope that you feel the same way about me. Because that's what my ministry is all about. My ministry is about, doggone it, either you're going to walk by faith or you ain't. And I'm talking about walking by faith even against Pastor Red. If you heard from the word of God. I too am a prophet as you are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you are. Yeah, you're a prophet just like me. And an angel said to me, and I know because Satan is an angel. Satan is an angel. An angel said to me by the word of the Lord, that's a lie. That's a lie. No, no man, no, I ain't got the time for no mediator. You don't need a mediator. When you, when you got, you got one-on-one -on -one conversation with the Lord. You don't need no mediator. You're in the place of ascension. You're in the place of ascension. Stop allowing people to take you out of the place of ascension just because they say they pastors and teachers and evangelists and apostles and prophets. I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel said to me by the word of the Lord, bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, you know what? You know what y'all's problem is. I'm gonna tell you. you know, that's why. That's why people can't handle my ministry. That's why pastors, church leaders can't handle my ministry. Cause I ain't thinking about y'all. I'm not thinking about none of y'all. None of y'all. What I'm think. The only thing I'm thinking about is how in the world I can avoid spending eternity in the lake of fire. That's the only thing I think about. That's all I think about. And, the, and, the, and what keeps me in that thought process is I live in the place of ascension. I live in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The old prophet was lying to him. I'm going to tell you something right now. The next time a man or woman of God give you a word and it turns out to be a lie and then you get mad at him, you better shut up. Because you, 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 you should have got your own word one on one. You can, you can get your, you don't need Pastor Rat. You can get your own word. Where do you think I get my word from? One on one time in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm a sinner saved by grace, just like you. I ain't no better than you. The old prophet was lying to him. What's this, what's this idiot right here? So the man of God, the man of God that was sitting in the place of ascension, personal relationship with Jesus, Pastor King, had a personal relationship and he allowed somebody to lie to him. So the man of God who had a personal relationship with Jesus returned with him and ate and drank in his house while they were sitting at the table the word of the Lord came to the old prophet who had brought him back. You know, because God be like, I'm not going to talk to this idiot. You know, I'm not going to talk to stupid Pastor King because, because you know, Pastor King shouldn't have listened to Pastor Red because I had a one-on-one -on -one relationship. So if he's going to believe, lie and tell Pastor Red, then I'm just going to go to this time. I'm just going to speak through lie and tell Pastor Red since Pastor King believed that, 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 that I'm talking to Pastor Red. The word of the Lord came to the old prophet who had brought him back. He cried out to the man of God who had come from Judah. This is what the Lord says. You have defied the word of the Lord and have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you in the place of ascension. You came back and ate bread and drank water in the place where he told you not to eat or drink. 
Therefore, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors. You better hear, you better hear this. You better, if you don't hear nothing I say in this message, you better hear this part right here. Therefore, your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors. You know what that because because your ancestors, your ancestors didn't listen to stupid people. Your ancestors didn't listen to lying prophets. Your ancestors didn't just go and listen to any pastor preach anything. You know, the pastor so-and-so's coming to Atlanta. Let's go see him. Oh, pastor so-and-so's coming to Augusta. Let's go see him. Oh, prophet so-and-so is coming to Charlotte. Let's go see him. Let's go to the manpower come. Let's go to the woman thou art loose conference. Therefore, your body I'm going to tell you something right now. The next time you open your mouth and you complain about a church asking you for money and money and money and money and money, you better shut up. Because that is not the teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is not his teaching. The, the message given to born again believers from the one that is seated that is risen and is seated at the right hand of God told us to go into the world and preach the gospel not to go into the world and preach the law and, and make people give us their finances your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors oh yeah yeah your, your ancestors that were smart your ancestors that was that was Holy Ghost filled, that was full of the Holy Ghost, that, that loved God, didn't, 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 didn't care what people thought about the fact that they didn't want to spend no time with them. They just spent time with the Lord. Sleeping in a peaceful tomb. In this lion prophet, the Lord had to come down out of the place of ascension because the old prophet wasn't living in the place of ascension so the word of the Lord had to come down from the place of ascension to tell this old prophet that was living in Bethel to tell this man of God from Judah who had left the place of ascension and was now eating and drinking in Bethel, where he wasn't supposed to be at, the word of the Lord had to come to this lying person. That's a shame. The word of the Lord came to a lying person. The angel said to me by the word of the Lord, bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying. word of the Lord came to a lying person. To tell this guy, you're gonna you you live in the place of ascension. Your body will not be buried in the tomb with your ancestors. You, you, you know, you know why I say that? Because you know that because when y'all's y'all's ancestors, y'all's mamas and daddies, your grandmamas, your granddaddies, your great grandmamas and your great grand y'all put them in heaven. When they die, y'all first thing you rest in rest in heaven. Rest in heaven. Okay, well, you 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 ain't going there. You ain't going there because you don't know how to stay in your place of ascension because you too uh, starstruck by people's titles rather than being starstruck by the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got to be careful who you listen to. Why? Because they may not be in the place of ascension. They may not be in the place of ascension. They may not be where you at. They may not be where you at. You better be careful who you listen to. Because they may not be in the place of ascension. You can talk all that I'm saved stuff all day long. But if you're not seated in the place of ascension, the gospel of Jesus Christ ain't nobody getting delivered out of the hands of the four horsemen you know the four horsemen you know the four horsemen 
you know who the four horsemen is. I'm going to show them to you again. But against principalities, that's one of them, against powers, that's the second one, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, that's the third one, against spiritual wickedness in high places, that's the fourth one, the four horsemen. Revelation 6 and 1 through 18. God bless you, cousin Stephanie. I love you. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. Spiritual warfare, part 3. Sunday. I'm giving you the, the verses so you'll be ready for me on Sunday. It's only eight verses. So before you turn on your TV tonight to look at the Minnesota Vikings play the Philadelphia Eagles before you turn to some TV channel on TV before you get on your Facebook page and see who's writing stuff on Facebook before you get on TikTok how about you take out five minutes to read Revelation chapter 6 verse 1 through 8 to learn about the four horsemen because that's what we're going to talk about Sunday in spiritual warfare part three hallelujah the name of jesus let us listen to our song tonight hallelujah the name of jesus hallelujah i won't give up or give in i'm holding on you gotta hold on to your place of ascension you gotta hold on to the end you got to be steadfast. You got to be unmovable. You got to always be abounding. Always abounding. But the place of ascension is the will of God. The place of ascension. Stand in your will. Stand in your will. I won't give up or give in. I don't care what they title is. Hold on to the end. Hold on. I will be steadfast, unmovable, always, always abounding. Going higher and higher in the place of ascension. I'm staying. I'm staying. Show me. I'm staying in your will. You're going to stay. You're going to stay. His will is for you to stay in the place of ascension. That's His will. I'm staying. You got to stay in bound. You got to use all your energy to stay in bound. You got to live in a motionless, living in bound. Use all your energy to stay in His will. I'm staying in your will. I'm, oh, they ain't gonna like you. They ain't gonna like you. People that don't live in the place of ascension not gonna like you. They're not gonna like you because you stay in His will. Hallelujah. You Lord, hey, Joseph's brothers hated him because he stayed in the will. Because he stayed in the will. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. King Saul hated David because he stayed in his will. Hallelujah. Your will. Say that. Here I am, Lord. Lord, I'm still 
in the place of ascension. I'm still here, Lord. You got to tell him that. Every trial you find yourself in, every situation you find yourself in, you got to stay in the will. You got to stay in the place of ascension. Tell him. Tell him you promise him. Tell him you promise him that you'll stay in the place of a sentence, knowing they're not gonna like you in the name of Jesus. Oh, they didn't like Daniel. Oh, they didn't like Daniel. Because Daniel stayed in the place of a sentence. Daniel kept praying three times a day. Hallelujah. That's what you gotta say. I'm staying, yes, I'm staying. I'm staying, yes, I'm staying. You gotta stay in the place of ascension. You gotta stay in the place of ascension. You gotta stay there. That's where your blessings come from. Every gift, every good gift, every perfect gift coming down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variance, neither shadow of turning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You got to stand in the place of ascension. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis 22 and 2. Hallelujah. The Lord told Abraham, he says, I want you to sacrifice Isaac up on the mountain that I will show you. See, the Lord always going to take you to a place of ascension. Matthew 17 and 1 says, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on a high mountain, on the Mount of Transfiguration, and he was transfigured before them. What does transfigured mean? To change the appearance in a positive, spiritual way. Hallelujah. You should, people should see a transfiguration in you. Because the place of ascension causes a transfiguration. Hallelujah. A transfiguration to where you can, the Lord can give you a command to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You can take the place of ascension and bring it down to earth and say what Jesus says. Hallelujah. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The place of ascension is at hand. It is called the gospel of Jesus Christ, the doctrine of Christ. He says, my doctrine is not mine, but him that sent me. If you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. The place of ascension. The place of ascension can only be accessed through the gospel of Jesus Christ. You keep on finding your joy and your happiness in the law of Moses because the law makes you cover up. The law makes you cover up. The gospel of Jesus Christ covers and then it exalts. It covers and then it raises you up with Christ. And when it covers you and it raises you up with Christ, you're supposed to seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, the place of ascension. God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, they've heard your word. They've heard your word, Lord. If they go out and they listen to other people, more than they spend time with you. And that, that, that's, our, that's our problem, Lord. We spend more time listening to other people than we do with drawing nigh to you. When we know that your word says to draw not unto God and he will draw not unto you, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. All we got to do is submit to you in the place of ascension. Stop worrying about what people say about us and start living by what you've said to us. Oh God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that, that revelation knowledge to stop thinking about what people are thinking about us 
and continue to live by what you have said to us in our personal relationship with you. Oh God, we love you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. I love every last one of you. You are so valuable to the kingdom of God. You have been raised with Christ. You are in the place of ascension. You have the anointing to destroy the works of the devil in your very life. And once you destroy the works of the devil in your very life, if you live in the place of ascension that enables you to destroy those works, you'll be able to be a light to somebody else to where they will be able to see somebody living in a place of ascension and will want to be like that. I thank the little gentleman, Tone, amen, that's joined me, never met Tone. I know he's a young man, Pastor King's nephew, I believe, Tone Jetson. So many places young man could be, but he's here tonight listening to the word of God, a young man. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. Ain't nothing greater to me than seeing the youth come on here to hear me teach the living word of God. Because Pastor Red ain't got too much longer left down here. Somebody's got to continue to carry the gospel into all the world. I'm not going to live forever. I'm not going to be here forever. According to the Bible, the age should be the 70. If that's if it's the case and, and that's God's will, then I really only have 12 more years to walk planet Earth in the name of Jesus. Anything above that, that means, that means the individual is living in the place of ascension and God still got a work for them to do. And they're doing it very well. Hallelujah. I love every last one of you. Thank you for joining me tonight. I will see you Sunday morning at 8 a.m. with Pastor King. Then I'll be back before you. Amen. Sunday afternoon. Amen. Hallelujah. With part three of spiritual warfare. We're going to talk about the four horsemen from Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. They are the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places in Revelation chapter 6, 1 through 8 breaks down exactly what those four do in the first four seals because in the fifth seal that's when the saints start getting killed. The first four seals, the four horsemen do damage and then in the fifth seal, the saints start dying. But we're talking about spiritual warfare in the four horsemen. I will see you Sunday at 11 a.m. God bless you. I love you. Amen and amen.